Uh, hello everyone, today I'll be going through the year 12 math method 3-4 worksheet 9. And um, yeah, this one isn't an easy worksheet. So yeah, let's go through it. So first of all, I'll again show all the answers. All right, cool, let's start. First question, this is a quotient rule. So how I like to remember the quotient rule is that we, first of all, we keep the bottom term here constant. So that's what I did here and derive the top term, which uh, dy dx of cosine x is just negative sine x. So the first term here, we keep the bottom term constant, then we divide the top term. So not divide, der take the der derivative of the top term. Then we minus the opposites, which is we keep the uh, top term constant, then derive the bottom term. Then we just do the bottom term, bottom term squared. So that's just um, basic uh, quotient rule question. And that's the answer. Next question, I first worked out what uh, the derivative of f is, which is this, and we plugging in, we plugging one to get f dash of one. So make sure to do this second step. Um, a lot of people ac accidentally miss out on one mark by not doing this final step here. So, yeah. All right. Next question. The first question asks for the coordinate of m, which is the minimum value. So as we can see this graph here. First of all, we know m is a positive number. So now we can solve f dash of x is equal to zero. We get x is either negative one on four, zero or one, and we know that m is a positive number. So uh, we know that m is sorry. So m is equal to one. Now we need to know the y value. So sorry, I mean the x coordinate of m is equal to one. Now we need to know the y coordinate of m. Just to do that, we're just plugging m into the graph of f. Then we get negative one. So m has coordinate one and negative one. The next question asks say the value for b such that fx plus b has no x-intercept. So what b here means is just a vertical translation. So say we, if b is one, we translate the whole graph up by one unit, b is two, two units, et cetera. So we know that minimum point here is negative one. Therefore, as long as b is greater than one, so as long as up this point moves all the way above the x-axis, so this is like the m image, which is a new point, then we're fine. So we know that as long as B is greater than one, this will have no X intercepts. So B is greater than one. Uh, the next question is a really simple class question. It just asks to find a tangent line. So we just use a tangent line function on our cast. So we do tangent line F of X and at X equals to uh, one on three. And we get Y is equal to five on 27 minus 28 on 27 X. So that's tangent line. The next question, us us to find the intersection with of this tangent line the graph. So we so the tangent line is at this point, but also intersects at this point and this point. To get these points, we just solve the tangent line is equal to f of x for x, and we get x is equal to one plus minus square root of thirty one on six. And the final question, actually not the final question, sorry. Uh, the next question is to work out the area. So the question is asking for the area of the bound, like the bounded area, which is this area here, combined with this area here. So all we do is just do the top function minus the bottom function, and the intervals are just the intersection point we found here. So it's just one minus root 31 on six, one plus 31, root 31 on six. And the top function is our tangent line, which is this thing here, we, and we minus the bottom function, which is f of x. And after we do that, we'll get the area of 31 root 31 on 405. Don't forget the unit squared, because uh, if it's all doing with area, we should put them in something squared. And yeah. So the next question asks us. Uh, so the next question here introduced the new function, which is g of x that has equation of this. So this can look complicated, but it's just asking for what values of m that g of x is equal to f of x. So if we see here, f of x has the same um, x to the power of four term, the same x to the power of three term. And here, f of x just have one. So negative one x squared, but here has m minus one x squared. So if they want to be equal, m must be zero because zero minus one is negative one. And that kind of works for everything after because there's no terms after f of x here. So that's why if we sub m of zero, all these things disappear as well. So m is just zero for this question. And the next one is we, it's an, they introduced another function, which is p of x. And we are trying to find all solutions for p dash of x is zero. So all the potential coordinates of turning points. 
Oh, sorry, not turning points, stationary points of inflection. So we just saw on cast, p dash of x equal to zero, we get x is one and x is equal to one plus minus square root of one minus a. The next question asks us to find the values for a, which uh, p has only one stationary point. So if we see here, first of all, there's a square root function here. So we know that if this square root is less than zero, then these two stationary points will be undefined. So we can kind of do one, minus a is you know less than zero which gives us um a is greater than one but if we consider that a if a is actually one in this case since all of these would equal to x is equal to one then that case still works that's why this answer should be a is greater than or equal to one so be careful with that it's not a greater than one but a is greater or equal to one because if x because if it, um a is one then all of these three values will give us the same x value basically so yeah, another way you can kind of check this is to plot the graph on your CAS and you will see there's only one stationary point when A is equal to one. All right, so the next question asks for us to find the minimum value of P when A is two. So first of all, we're subbing A is two into this P of X here. Then we just solve for the um, turning. So we solve for the minimum point, which occurs at X equal to one. And we just do P of one, which gives us negative two. That means the minimum value is negative two. So we have to write P as negative two, basically. So the final question, which is the hardest one here, asks that if P has only one stationary, uh, one stationary point, which after we see this, we can immediately, immediately know that A is greater than or equal to one, because if X, A is outside of those values, then P would have um, either zero or more than one stationary point. So we are only interested in A values that's greater than or equal to one. And so we need to find the values of A, which P of X is equal to, uh, where, where if we solve p of x is equal to zero and has no solution. So first of all, we already know that a is greater or equal to one for one stationary point, right? And we know that if there's no values of a which p of x is equal to zero, then it must have no x-intercepts. So we know that the minimum value of p of x always occurs at x equals to one. Um, because we kind of calculated that from um, this question here by knowing, knowing x is equal to one here, it kind of shows that this is always a minimum value no matter what the um, a term is. So we, we just have to uh, check that at if, as long as if x is equal to one, p of x is you know above the x-axis, then p of x equal to zero will have no solution. So what I did here is I just subbed one for every x, so we get so P of one will look something like two minus eight plus four, bracket A plus two minus A, A plus eight squared. And simplifying that a bit, it gives zero is equal to A squared minus four A plus two, which is a quadratic. Solving that gives us A is equal to two plus minus root two. And since it says it, it only has one stationary point, we know that A is must be greater or equal to one. Therefore we can reject A is equal to two minus root two. Therefore we just know that as long as A is greater than two plus root two, then this graph, so like if I kind of draw it here, the minimum point of this graph, right, would be above the um, what, uh, the x-axis, sorry. So, so P of x is equal to zero would have no solutions, basically. Yeah, so I'll just quickly show you all the answers here. And the answers here, they, um, uh, for this question here, they said is A is greater than one, but I'm pretty sure it's A is uh, greater or equal to one. But um, if that's not the case, please let me know as well. But yeah, that's all the official answers that came with this worksheet. So cool. I'll see you guys all next week.